Oh, oh buddy, the... your calf. Oh, man, that's just rude. For no reason in the calf, and then you're going to yeah, knife it's him? it's a waste of a round. Come on. Just moving up to the breach, splitting the stack. This is good. See, round, Look, yeah, rounds yeah, start ripping. Good. That's why you don't stand in front of the door. In there. Well, yeah, you like... got to be able to trust your equipment. So anything that you have on you, you've trained with that over and over and over again until it just feels automatic. It's just a muscle reflex at that point. Hey, my name's Cameron Fath. I was a former Army Ranger out of 2nd Ranger Battalion, and you can call me Nighthawk. Hey, my name is Israel Wright. I was a Special Forces Green Beret. I deployed to Iraq in 2008, and you can call me Dragon. All right, everybody, we're back. It's good to see you. It's good to be with you. We're doing a couple missions from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Hide your kids, hide your wife, because we're getting into this. What a beautiful day to hunt. What a beautiful night, right? Because we mostly come at night, Absolutely. mostly. So we're doing a mechanical breaching. Oh, look, a Huli oh, tool. Oh! So the actual equipment they're using is actually very accurate. Typically, in a squad, you'll carry mechanical breaching equipment, explosive breaching equipment, right. ballistic breaching equipment, like shotguns. Yep. These guys are ready to pretty much tackle any type of obstacle that they might face. Right. I mean, they've obviously gotten the intel. They know where the house is, mm -hmm. what it looks like, where the entrances and exits are. They're ready to go. Oh. Open window, ladder up, baby. A collapsible ladder, yeah, something mm -hmm. that you would definitely probably use if yeah, you know. Yeah, we definitely do use it. Typically, uh, you bring a couple ladders on you on an objective just so you can look over walls and find entrances such as what they're doing right now. And it looks like they're doing a silent clear, so they don't want to be blowing the doors off this place, letting everybody know they're there. So it needs to be very slow, methodic, and they're trying to use stealth as their security. Okay, the nods, nods down, baby. Yeah. I love this. You learn to get really comfortable seeing only green. Yeah, swag heard. You're grabbing a gun. Yeah, everybody in that room's a threat if there's a done. gun. Yeah. Okay, finish her up. <laughs> Just in case. I don't, yeah, hopefully okay. get her the first time. Yeah. Ooh, Big, good stack. I love they're covering the corners as they're coming up. These guys have done this before. Even using suppressed weapons, when the rounds start firing, the jig's up. Like, you've just gone hard at that point. Oh, oh nice one, buddy. Oh, good job. Just make sure man. she doesn't go shoot her. Oh, no, you can't. That's okay. not, one you're not allowed. Time. Not there allowed. Nice. Whoever's doing the gameplay for this is pretty on top of it. Yeah, this is slick. It's like you say, at this point, even if they have suppressors, I mean, everybody knows you're there, you know? I love how they're staying methodical, though. They're staying nice and smooth. Yeah, they need to. There's a saying, uh, silence, violence, silence. You start out quiet, rounds start flying, you go really hard, really aggressive, really violent, and then when the pace slows, back to silence. Uh-oh. Whoa! That's not good. Now, wait a minute, he looked like he was just passing that doorway by, exactly. so you wouldn't do that, you know? Yeah, every doorway is a threat, even if it's closed or open. Typically, it's a technique called pying, is where you would have your gun up and you would just slowly come in front of it, chopping those angles like a pie slice. Yep. You'll be able to see the enemy before they see you using that method. And I mean, even a closed door, you should be squared up with it because if rounds start flying, I'd rather take rounds to the front of my plate than the side. We were always that. taught, you know, as long as you got two people, you can stack up. Absolutely. On the door, you know. Two to clear. Two to clear, that's right. So see, stop. splitting the stack on the door, slowly going in. Whoa! Uh oh. Oh. That's oh. a baby. Oh, don't shoot the baby. Okay. You gotta secure though. Mm -hmm. Secure. Yeah. You'll have a team behind you if you're doing the clearance. Uh oh. See, this What'd would be see? where you, you would hide. Oh. oh, he's got a gun under the bed. <laughs> And they could hide anywhere. I know that we trained where they have little cubby holes in the corner, maybe even grates up top, and you gotta learn to take note of all that stuff as you come into the room. Yeah, you're not just looking at corners, you're looking in red zones, typically yeah. we'd call them. So anything behind you doors. can't see, yeah, anything where you, you can't see, that's a red zone. Don't you do it. I don't see her looking it. at something. She wants to do it. She looking. keeps looking back. Yeah, no, Gun on the back table. Up. Done. Yeah. Look, in that situation, I probably would have done the same thing. But uh -oh. she keeps looking, she's acting shady. She's backing up towards something. She's obviously moving towards something, and we see it was a detonator. She's a detonator. You know? Yeah, she can clack off that entire building. It's a very simple mathematical equation when it comes to that kind of stuff. One plus one. Yep. Can I just get all like giddy and kid like for a second? Because that was one of the funnest things I ever did was riding on the side of it with your legs dangling out, and you got the nods on, flying mm -hmm. over the desert skies of Herzegstan. 
typically wouldn't stand right in front of the door just because like we saw from our previous pals yeah. rounds rip right through yeah angle yourself surprised they didn't use any type of flashbang or initiative mm -hmm. to kind of set the momentum right there typically you throw a nine banger or a one banger in there right at the breach just yeah. to kind of um, confuse things up Moving up to the breach, splitting the stack. This is good. See, ra Look, yep, rounds yep, start ripping. True. That's why you don't stand in front of yeah, the door. In there. Good eye, good eye. Gosh, I could barely see that. You gotta stress the importance of knowing how to operate your equipment quickly and efficiently because that's almost a, a fine motor skill putting those nods up because they have the lock on. That's so right, you, you practice. That's something you'd practice. Yeah, you, people uh, think that we're always training magazine changes. No, it's everything technical skills. Yeah, just you like, gotta be able to trust your equipment. So anything that you have on you, you've trained with that over and over and over again until it just feels automatic. It's just a muscle reflex at that point. I like the fine details of this game. I always need security everywhere. I love all the headshots. It's all all head, that's all we ever did was headshots, folks. Knowledge of where you're at, I mean, you're in a third world country, you know that the walls aren't, you know, whatever they're made out of, made out of mud brick or whatever, taking a shot like that, that's pretty impressive. You know? The only thing you have to be really cautious about when you're ripping rounds through walls, especially if you've already established a foothold on that floor, is just knowing where your teams are. I mean, you gotta know what who's on the other side, you gotta know where your team's at, you make sure that nobody would be on the other side of that wall anyway. Especially because it seems like these guys are moving backwards, turning a corner, and then facing where they just came from. Yeah. You need to be very cautious. There's a lot of doors and stuff. I mean, you would practice that going through a house together, knowing where everybody's at. You know, just that sixth sense of I know if I'm here and I see you turn in there, I know you're over there. You know. And so if I turn back around, I gotta be cautious because you might you might be in the doorway, you might be in the room. Frontline trace is super important, especially when you're moving with multiple teams in one building. It's pertinent to mission success because you need everybody to come home. Yeah. All right. Here we okay, secure. Okay. Looks like we're going into the SSC phase of an operation. Kiddos Changing hearts and babies. minds. Yeah. It's not all violence, folks. <laughs> How long has Captain Price been in the military? Dude, like like 47 years. 47 years? <laughs> this dude's Dust. He's been in every major conflict ever of every country. One of the most the dangerous men in the world. Yeah, never changes his his mustache, his, his mutton chops. Yeah. Uh, my nods would be down at this yeah, point. Right. Nods yeah, right. Nods down. Can't see anything. Mm -mm. I always love the nighttime training. The, the quiet, and you're out there in the woods and stuff. I played outside when I was a kid a lot, you know. Yeah. So this is like playing outside for me. There we go. There we go. Well, it seems like everybody, when they grow up and join the military, they're still kids just doing what they <laughs> dreamt about. There's playing always soldier. a little something about that. Playing soldier. I know, that's what I felt like. <laughs> just bigger, more dangerous toys. Right, yeah, yeah. There's this thing that happens when you get close to a light source at night, you know, your eyes adjust to the light source. So if you look around, you actually don't have a good depth of vision if you look away from the light out into the darkness. So we did training missions where we'd get really close to guys who were next to a fire. They couldn't see us, even though we were getting pretty close because they were, there's that fire blindness, that light blindness that you get at night. They're moving very quietly for being in full kit. So it's stepping on hay, you know. Yeah, stepping on hay. their footprints. Being, have chem lights, bolt cutters on your back, clicking, clanking as you're taking your steps. <laughs> right. I understand this is a video game, and it's all fun and games. But, but come on! <laughs> yeah. Ooh, little repelling. You ever do any uh, front, down repelling with your weapon drawn? Not with my weapon drawn. Look at that. You have to do repelling in ranger school, and it was all a blur to me because I was just so tired and hungry I couldn't focus on what the remember. knots were or anything. Maybe so. you did, and you just don't remember. Exactly. I would love to mountain climb and repel again in my own environment. Right, not under the thumb of the yeah. military. They ruined it for where me. Where they tell you where to do and where to go and what to wear and what to eat. You don't realize how tired you are until after you're done with the mission. Because this whole thing, that's a lot of stamina, moving slowly, moving methodically, taking in your surroundings, taking people out, you know, a constant focus for a good couple hours. And then at the end of it, man, you're just dog tired, man, because you've used all your senses and all your endurance and stamina. It's like going at 100% really slowly for like three hours. And that's why we train for that. That's why PT is such an important thing. Uh, yeah. That's why we're running four to five miles almost every single day, like lifting, rucking, swimming. Mm -hmm. This is all to prepare you for doing this because this this isn't easy. And that's why I consider the special operations community to be part of mm -hmm. the athletic world. Elite this, athletes. Yeah. Elite athletes. I mean, per definition, 
position. I mean, they don't play a sport, but if you consider war a sport, I think we're one of the best. The, yeah. the ultimate uh, endurance sport. Oh, who we got here? Oh, oh buddy, the... your calf. Oh, man, that's just rude. For, for no reason in the calf, and then you're going to yeah, knife him? it's a waste of a round. Come on, just, you know, just take him out of his misery. Just go for the knife in the neck. Maybe. I want him to suffer. <laughs> there you go. See, that's polite. What's very interesting is every time he engages, he'll cant his weapon to get the laser. Right. But the laser's coming the laser out, out already, so we wouldn't have to do any of that fancy, like, canting or whatnot. I mean, typically when you got your laser, you never even come into your cheek to look down right. the sight. You're just playing laser tag. You've got it. Put yeah. it on what you want to be dead, yeah. essentially, and pull the trigger. Headshots, headshots, headshots. Just, you get a headshot, you oh, get a headshot, you get a headshot. Conveniently placed uh, electronic board. A lot of people don't consider that they're at threat 100% yeah. of the time. You live in a war-torn country, man. Don't leave your electrical boxes on the outside of your homes. <laughs> Wait a minute, well, all these hostages look the same. They do. Are they cloning? Is that well, the secret to Cold War? They're all in the same thing. It wasn't a nuclear race, it was a race for cloning uh, technology. Ooh, now I'm really interested. There's Now that there's a sci-fi element, he's so smooth. Who is this soldier of mystery? The lights are a little unnecessary. <laughs> and if you consider, unless you have like an auto focuser on your nods, when you're using a secondary and looking iron sights, you won't be able to see those things. Yeah. Your depth perception under night vision is mm -hmm. you can see far, but anything up to like five or six feet of you is just a complete blur. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'd have technology like red dot RMRs on our, our pistols to where you could use them and look through your nods and see the dot through your night vision, but shooting iron sights is more of an index shooting, which you just point your, your thumbs where you want the bullets to go and you use those as reference. You can't actually physically aim under nods. This guy's an expert. I'm just so impressed. <laughs> He's just so smooth. He's so dreamy. He's so dreamy. Who is this mystery man? Rick the Viking. Rick the Viking. Way to go, Rick. Oh, oh, nods up. Oh, they got him now. Yeah. Parkour. Hardcore parkour. That's the wrong game I'll do. <laughs> How did he get in? Where's that gameplay footage? He's like, dude, you I didn't do it. I swear to God, they're not mine. I'm really a good guy. Don't look at my laptop. Don't look at my search history. Is that a pipe bomb? Uh, no, it's it's plans for a, a gas, like a chemical factory, and they're looking for it. Oh my God. I played this game. A little bit of chopper fire coming in from outside. Is this an inside agent then? You think he's betrayed you, but he's actually really trying to get to the bottom of the whole chemical factory kind of thing. Okay. Holy Ooh. Jesus Christ. And this is what shocks me, that Price has been alive this long. How many explosions, how many gunshots, how many knife wounds? His VA disability is at like 200%. I was the driver of the second vehicle, and so and you just gotta keep driving, you know. Keep driving, yeah. bullets yeah. fly, and you're just no like. No big deal. Just, yep. Oh, he just banged himself. You ever been banged? Yeah, man. You know, I didn't even notice that he's carrying 474 rounds. Today we're gonna be taking a look at Modern Warfare 2 Lead the Way mission. And Israel, did you did you ever hear that Rangers lead the way? You know what, I heard something about that. Why don't you do it? tell us about that? Why should I tell you when we can just watch? Whoa, let's go. Whoa. Ranger, U.S. Army Rangers, Love PFC me, uh, Joseph Allen. Oh yeah, they always make it to private, dude. <laughs> if you wanted to make this authentic, you need a team leader, a tab. But yeah, 175 looks like they're going. Is that right. for exposition purposes, you know, so they get to tell the private exactly what's going on so exactly. the player knows? Well, most of the privates don't know what the hell's going on anyways. <laughs> you heard them like sheep, but they're really lethal sheep. Bridge layer. I remember that from G.I. Joe. I had the bridge layer G.I. Joe vehicle. It's so interesting seeing different MOSs work together to just collectively create this giant fighting force. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were really putting a large emphasis on modularity, making everything modular, being able to attach this unit to this unit and this unit come together, and then they do like a joint operation, you know. I saw a scar pop up there, and I carried one overseas, so. You did? Cool. Yeah. Oh, cool, man. That was right when I was getting out. The SCAR was just coming in as I was out processing, so. The SCAR is definitely an interesting weapon system. It has 308 capability, so the reason I use it, because I was a gun team leader, and that means I worked with the 240s, and that's all 7.62, so mm -hmm. I wanted something that I could reach out and touch what my guns were touching, and with the M4, that's not really that possible, because you're using 5.56. I could mark a target, especially in a desert environment when you're trying to call targets out. You can't be like, hey, you see that grain of sand right there? Mm -hmm. it would be like, hey, on my splash, and I have tracers, and I could just shoot like 900 meters and make the bullets impact and you can see where that splash hits, I'd be like, right there, fucking ah, hit that thing. I do that in the store when I'm shopping. I want that thing on the shelf over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got the skeleton Humvee. We use those. 
Doors out. Ooh, yeah. hello. I had a dream I was a ranger. Oh god, it's real! John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Training Center School, right there on his shoulder. Is that explained that he should have mm -hmm. that on his shoulder? Because we only had that, obviously, when we were training and in, in the, the Q course. Yeah. yeah. I that's, caught that. <laughs> See, I don't I remember some things. Yeah. Rangers lead the way. That's right. Yeah, dude. Dude, that's a general Normandy Coda move right there. Nope, going the wrong way. Everybody's just stacked behind this barrel. Yeah, not a lot of cover, but the vehicle yeah. would be a good idea. You got the rocks there. Vehicles, you gotta position yourself behind that engine block because that's pretty much the only part of a vehicle that can truly stop munition. That weapon is arguably even better than your squad automatic weapons in that team setting. You can't curve bullets unless you're in a really high advantage and use plunging fire on, mm -hmm. a, on a target, but the only truly way to get around dead space and deflate is with that 40 mic mic, and that's what makes it such an important tool. All right, enemy technical, let's get that Oh, AT4 up there, I like yep, it. There you go, any enemy technical that is not safe in a ranger platoon, <laughs> you're gonna get the sh blown out of you. That kind of sounds erotic. <laughs> in a different context, it might be yeah. kind of messy. Also, you wouldn't be rocking fully automatic. It's pretty much a semi-automatic world out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Full auto is way too unmanageable in a far fight. You need that precision fire. You're gonna achieve that with semi-automatic. <laughs> the guy just showing us the way. Yeah. Go up the bridge. Hop on that minigun, Private. You know exactly what you're doing. Oof. Oftentimes in Iraq, when I was there, I was often the gunner up on top. I didn't have a minigun, but mm -hmm. we had a 50 cal machine yeah. gun, so. Yeah, too. The only time I really got time on a minigun was overseas. We had one attached to one of our trucks. If you're a gamer, you'd know how to use this because it's literally a video game. Remote so you, control. Yeah, yeah you and that thing, you could shoot the f***ing off a honeybee from like 1,000 meters. Whoa. Huge <laughs> Vietnam era <music. laughs> Yeah, the M134 minigun is the one we were using, and those shoot about 2,000 to 6,000 rounds per minute based off environmental consideration. And with the ammo shortage today, you're shooting a couple grand every minute. I'd be smiling. That's bougie. You'd be like, I'm rich! <laughs> <laughs> Make it rain! We used to have this thing called rolling rendition, where we were looking for somebody, and we would go rolling through the town, a little convoy, we'd go through these narrow streets in Mosul, Iraq, looking for somebody. We'd have our asset in there with us. He'd be covered up, because he was from the neighborhood. Yeah. Like, that guy, that's him. That guy drinking tea right there, that cafe, that's him. So we'd roll by, we'd Snitch. stop, and then boom, 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 we'd yeah, roll up, us. and then we'd take and we'd roll out. Nice, dude, what a snitch. <laughs> So technically, if you're running through a convoy like this, every gun is going to be pointed a different way. So your lead vehicle is going to be pointing forward, your vehicle behind that is either left and right, and then you would flip-flop from there. If the truck in front of you is pointing left, your gun's pointing right. That way you have 360 coverage. Oh, and you can't shoot those guys because they're not a threat, but you know they're bad. So yeah. You just remember their face. Just, yeah, staring them down, wearing body armor behind the flag, yeah. jihadi flag. Look, I got your number, buddy. I'll see you later. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, rip concerned. them, dude. See, that's why you're pointing to the left. Yeah. Okay, rooftop. Always concerned the rooftops because I couldn't get that 50 cal up that high, so I'd be on my M4 in the city. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that if you're not on free gun, which is basically when you unhook your panel, which is what you mount the 50 on on the vehicle, you really just have lateral movement there. Yeah. And then you have slight adjustments that you can make with that panel. So, and Small. those adjustments take, because you're, you're spinning a dial on that Picatinny. So unless you go free gun, you can't really manipulate that gun. And once it's on free gun, it's a little hard to control. So you don't get as accurate fire. Oh, dude, just rammed it. Get it. Definitely a private's driving, because he's just everywhere. When we were in Iraq, we owned the roads. So anything we did was the right decision. We wanted to go to the other side of the road against oh, yeah. traffic, we wanted to throw flashbangs, we wanted to ram a car. It was always correct, oh, yeah. because we never knew if there was an IED in that vehicle or not, you know? Yeah. That's a bad habit I've tried to break, because now I, if I see, like, if there's traffic, I'm like, why don't I just drive around it on the other side of the freeway? We have it's like, I can't do that anymore. You have rules in America. In Regiment's case, where you had four squads and one of them being a weapon squad, weapon squad would pretty much take the big guns. So you would have weapon squad attached throughout those three squads. So say you're running three vehicles, your gunners are going to be on that machine gun while the fire team uh, occupies the rest of the seat. Yeah, it was sim something similar. We always had a load plan. I knew that because I was the junior guy on the team, I was always going to get either the driver or the turret, you know? Because yeah. the guys, the, the senior guys, they'd be They want to get out. Yeah, they want to get they out. They want to hang fight. out, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'd be stuck in there. I remember the only time we ever got ambushed in Mosul, I was the driver of the second vehicle. And so and you just got to keep driving, you know. Keep driving, bullets yeah, just, flying. You're just like, no big deal. Just, yep. Just 
Now, one thing I can say is there was a fair amount of driving training. I got to go to a, a Humvee course in Indiana for a week where we just learned all the capabilities of the Humvee at the time. That was like the main vehicle. Also, we would do our own driving training and everybody would flip and take turns as being mm -hmm. the driver, being the gunner, being the passenger and stuff. So everybody would have some aptitude in case that plan changed in the middle of a battle or something like that. As long as you have your military driver's license though, you need to get that. You're not driving without it. What is the military driver's license test? It's a piece of paper. Um, <laughs> This most stupid thing in the military is like, well, you need a military driver's license and it needs to qualify you to drive a vehicle and it needs to go through your master driver and that's the dumbest shit in the world. I think I remember my driving test was me getting the paper and my master driver oh, yeah. signing off on the paper. Yeah. Like, all right, get out of here. Get You're supposed to go through driver's training, which is like, go up this hill, now back up, now make a left, now make a right. I had a private that didn't have a driver's license, but he had a military driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He driving a war zone, <laughs> yeah. just not on the streets of America. Yeah, it was, and he was 20 years Years old, I'm like, get your f license, man. Oh man, he's wearing bump helmets. See, that wouldn't happen because those aren't ballistic. Yeah, oh, what pretty... they're wearing right now? Yeah, they're just fast helmets. So like, they're lightweight. They're pretty much made of carbon. But if you got shot in the face, it would not do anything. Mm. Yeah, Glock, man. We use Glocks. Speaking of getting shot in the face, you ever wear any ballistic face masks? Nah, man. I never did. Either. The only time we'd ever wear something on our face was when we were working with Simunition, and it's like that pretty much training transition over from Miles gear and blanks. Yes. And Miles gear was just laser tag, so you'd be wearing this vest with indicators on them. And it never them. works. It never works, ever. And then you had blanks with, oh, he just banged himself. You don't want to bang yourself. Don't bang boss. yourself. Bang the enemy. You ever been banged? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's Wait, I didn't. You ever been flash banged? You ever been flash banged? That. Yeah. My girlfriend's gonna kill me. <laughs> you ever been banged? And then blanks, obviously, you can't get target feedback. Everybody's just shooting mm -hmm. just because it makes a noise. But simunition was uh, an actual projectile came out of your gun. It was like a paint bullet or like an airsoft round. And uh, yeah, that shit hurt. So you definitely knew if you were doing something wrong because you would pay for it. Did he pick up an AK just now? He did. All right. Flashbang, man. Definitely flashbang every single room in this type every, of environment, yeah. dude. Yeah. Those things are such a good tool. I think I had one frag, but I had like seven flashbangs. Yeah. On my Everywhere on the back, you, have, you carry flashbangs on your back for your buddy to use because you're always constantly changing the stack of how you maneuver through this. So it's like, there's not one dedicated flashbang guide. And there's not one dedicated like one man or two man or three man because it's constantly changing. When, yeah, when you train CQB, everybody trains each individual position. So you're ready no matter how that stacks up, you're ready to go. You know, I didn't even notice that he's carrying 474 rounds on him. Now 444. <laughs> so that's a lot of ammo. A basic combat load is around 210 rounds, which is doctrine. And that's uh, seven magazines, right? Because you got 30 round mags. So this guy's carrying over 14. <laughs> They're wrapped mags. around yeah. his torso, up on the shoulder pads, on the knees, you know? Yeah, not to mention you're carrying two 40 mic mics or three 40 mic mics now. Yeah, nods during the daylight, you typically wouldn't wear your night vision on your helmet if it's daylight because unless you have covers to protect the lenses, that sunlight can Go trans them up. Yeah, yeah, inside to outside, yeah. Mm -hmm. transition. Instead of walking down the middle of that, you're gonna be have two squads on each side pulling cross coverage because the guys on the left can see way more of that right side than, the, than just walking center. Not to mention, you're a machine gunner's wet dream if you're walking right down an alleyway because that's called frontal fire. And you can just literally like ducks in a row. One burst can take out like six guys. Guy Coolest, thanks for the gameplay, by the way. Yeah, man, you're doing great. Yeah, right, dude. Th but this General is Shepard. Hey, Private, you're taking orders from me. I'm gonna tell you everything. Here, don't worry about your team leader. Don't worry about your squad leader. Don't worry about your platoon star. And you're, you're taking it from me, man. Talk about pulling rank. Did you ever see a general? Yeah. So when I was in the Guard, I had to meet the general of the California National Guard. No deployment. <laughs> okay. The whistling is actually accurate. Explosions go up and out. Yeah, let's go, baby. Yeah, it's not back. just a breaching tool. <laughs> I'd take that shot 10 times out of 10. It's almost like an afterthought. You know, like you take the shot and then maybe you think about it, oh, that was a pretty close shot. Today so we're gonna be looking at Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the embassy mission. Let's get it started. Man, Price, that facial hair never goes out of style. Never goes out of style, and it doesn't age either. Yeah, that's right. Nor does Price. Combat keeps it young. Everyone wants to know the secret to beauty. Yeah. War. <laughs> a protest a party, going. A party going on. Oh, they've got it. They've oh, got fast it. rope in. All right, dude. You had a little bit of experience, yeah. right? Okay. Oh, yeah. I never year, did anything like that. Really? No. Every year we have to certify on the fast rope. Uh-oh. Do you have to certify in 
fast roping out of a crashing helicopter? No, just a one that's not crashing. That's so scary. With all that combat equipment that weighing you down. Yeah, right. That hurts. Yeah, you drop with a lot more force when you got like 30 pounds of gear on you. You drop like a rock. Get your hat, Price. Yeah, nobody's ever seen Price without a hat. He just saves money on haircuts, keeps it shaved. <laughs> Okay, just going in with a pistol? What happened to your weapon, dude? Yeah, right. You better pick up something quick, I guess. So they're trying to get into the embassy, and we're trying to get to the wolf as well. We're both after the same guy. Okay. I love it. He's like, Everyone's no, like, we're not here for you. Who are you guys? And they're no, like, just running around the guns. Your, we're not your ex, Phil. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, Price's kit is always set up so well. So slick. Yeah, that's the one thing I do appreciate that Call of Duty takes a lot of time in, yeah. is researching and like understanding actually kit designs. Like the gameplay might be a little like obscure and ridiculous at times, but the accuracy of like equipment used is phenomenal. Uh oh, bulletproof yeah. glass. Oh, I love it. Jesus. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. And yet we're not even paying mind to that. Price is just keeps moving. He's like, oh, that's yeah. just a Tuesday. Oh, I hate this. Oh, come on. Family, he has my family. Hello? Sorry, brother. Sorry, you man. just have to keep it moving. Ah, oh, mm -mm. rough. Happens, You're gonna man. get yours, butcher. Is that the butcher? That's the butcher right there. Yeah, he's trying to get in. Really? Talk about a dude that's like the least intimidating guy ever. He's wearing a soccer jersey <laughs> to a firefight. Yeah, right. The Church web gear doesn't make you look tougher. Man. Yeah, yeah. Where's the trench coat? Where's the eye patch? We need a real bad looking bad guy here. <laughs> Is that a Hilux truck? That's one tough That's truck. That's a to high, to, yeah. Yeah, to be able to bust through an embassy wall like that. Exactly, I love the Hilux. It's not yeah. available in the States. Yeah, right, only overseas. Yeah. Only overseas, that thing is badass. We had them overseas and yeah. I want one they can take so anything. bad. Yeah. Anything, it's a Tacoma on steroids, yeah. I love it. All bulletproof yeah, glass, so we got good cover. May not be concealment, because you can see right through it, but boom, dude, wow. get, get bunkered, brother. This I guy plays it. paintball. Yeah. Yeah, this is a sticky situation. They're kind of right on top of each other exactly. as they move through. Especially just group. two guys yeah, just trying two. to take out this force and your leapfrogging, you gotta worry about frontline trays, you gotta worry about cross coverage, you gotta worry about accidentally shooting your own guy when you're bounding up yeah. on each side. Price and Garrick, they've been through everything together. They yeah. know each other's moves. Oh, look out. Tier one yeah. operators. Oh. Yeah, let's go, baby. Yeah, it's not back. just a breaching tool. <laughs> That's Love badass. That. Love that. You're standing right there. Hey, don't stand in front of the door, Come man. On, Fatal funnel. A little lazy sometimes. Okay. Oh, hey, there are guys. It's the crew. We're back together again. I'm pretty sure I saw that chick in Syria. Actually, it was very interesting because they have a entire woman fighting force over there. No kidding. Yeah, they were badass, and they wow. were right next to the compound and like secret crush. Dude, it was awesome. <laughs> Warrior princess. Much Warrior respect. princess. Every yeah. man needs one. Mr. Ambassador. I can hear you, but... Save the ambassador. Come on, you're gonna be okay, buddy. Oh, you're not oh, gonna be okay. You're executed. So much for the cushy appointment. See, that guy looks like a bad guy. He's got the robes on. Yeah. He's not running around <laughs> he's, in a he's soccer playing jersey. playing the part. Yeah, easily to recognize on the battle. Exactly. You want to take out that guy's morale, just kill Messi. Kill yeah. Ronaldo. Kill one of those guys, and he's gonna stop fighting. You're so cruel. War is cruel. All right, we're gonna save somebody here. Oh, I love it, yeah. Leading her out. Oh, man. What are you gonna do with this guy? Tapping into the cameras, you gotta lead her out. You gotta guide her the whole way. Okay. No, I'm oh, sorry. You got it. You gotta keep going. Self aid. No. What are you doing? Oh, if you're in a situation, you, know, you gotta get out of there. Yeah, good. No, there they come. Oh no. Let's see. Oh. Neo. Are we playing the PC? agents are coming for you, Neo. Get to the garage. Ooh, yeah. Get there him. we go. Let's just line up like stormtroopers. Exactly. <laughs> Said with better aim. I will be gone, brother, but do you let me again? Get in there, Wolf. You stay in that yeah. refrigerator. You're on timeout, bro. So this looks like I wonder if they kind of ripped from the headlines a little bit of Benghazi because now we're holed up in some place outside the embassy, kind of like the annex situation. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Hillary. Uh, wasn't gonna say anything. I can't. <laughs> Shut up about it. <laughs> yeah, but man, no, there was a coordinated attack. You know, back in 2012, Benghazi, Libya. They attacked the embassy. Unfortunately, we lost uh, our ambassador there, and then another guy. And then they holed up. There was a mile away. There was an annex. 
and then they brought everybody to the annex and then they got attacked there as well. So this yeah. looks very similar to the setup, kind of an urban area. So I wonder if they didn't take a couple of cues from that situation. That was a sticky situation. Yeah. All right. Okay, send that mortar, brother. A little illumination, I like it. Oh yeah, a little loom round. Oh yeah, he's an M14. Just picked it up out of nowhere, huh? That's the thing you gotta worry about, like in the real world. The real world. Like you actually have to zero these weapons per the individual. Right. So like, right. like if you pick up a gun and you aim it, there's a big chance that those bullets aren't gonna go where you want them to go because that sight isn't zeroed for that gun. And not to mention different zeros equate to different distances. So you can zero your gun at 25 meters, you can zero your gun at 100 meters, and every zero you do is gonna throw your bullets off completely and it's up to the user to know their hold. If you pick up a gun and you point it and aim, you might not hit what you want because of the red core. Yeah, the more you know. Get down! That's a close mortar fire. Nice. Yeah, we need to get out of here. Uh, oh boy, incoming, oh, get down. No. Oh, buddy. Uh, the whistling is actually accurate on mortar oh, really? fires when they come. I didn't come thought in. a mortar didn't. Uh, I was yeah. never in any mortar fire, so. so yeah, it's, you actually hear the whistle when it comes in. It's like, that's how you know. That's why incoming battle drill get down because when a mortar strikes, explosions go up and out. Yeah. So that's the reason why you would lay down flat. Right. I mean, it'd save your ass if it struck close enough, but right. I mean, that's just leaving it up to chance. But right. definitely getting Benghazi feels from this right, right. now. Right. Yeah. Birds inbound for close air. What is that? That's the super laser. The super laser? Um, Price makes me feel, when he looks into my eyes, I feel like I can do anything. In, in those dark, forgotten eyes, there is a heart. The heart of a soldier. Exactly. I like that man-on-man -man contact. Yeah. That lets you know he's like... It's the brotherhood. It's the brotherhood of war. Use laser marking. So that is actually accurate. Either we didn't have any much use for them for our particular mission, or we just didn't have them around. But uh, this is not very familiar to me. We never had any experience, especially not calling in fire with like a drone or anything like that. The ones we used, because we had something similar to this, uh, but it wasn't visible laser, it was IR, and it would be like a giant lightsaber that went for miles. And you could actually mark targets with that and call for fire on there, or mark targets for gun runs, or just calling in a bird, you can lasso them in and be like, hey, actually land here, because we need you. The only experience I had with the IR stuff is trying to find a house in a neighborhood you've never been in before. You have a surveillance bird. They could sparkle the house with yeah. this IR and you couldn't see it to the naked eye, but you could see the house is lit up like a Christmas tree. Yeah, it's like God's laser. You're like, show me the way! And this laser would come out of nowhere and you had no idea where it'd come from. Badass. Okay, use that 203, dude. 40 right. Mike Mike is... There we go again. 40 Mike Mike. I'm back, people. <laughs> yeah. 40 Mike Mike is one of the greatest assets on the battlefield. You can clear dead space with it. You can clear defilade with that. You can launch that sucker over walls. Just make sure you're in your maximum arming distance. Cause you know when you like can kill someone in Call of Duty just by hitting them with the 40 Mike Mike up right, front. Right. Yeah, that's a real thing. It won't go unless it's past its arming distance, which is usually around like five to seven. That means foot. arming distance. You mean after you fire it, it arms itself after it yeah. goes a certain distance. I think it's around, don't quote me on this, but I think it's around 35 meters past that. Otherwise, it'd be like in Terminator 2, just fire it point blank and bring yeah, the, the smoke rounds in the guy's gut. Yeah, accurate. <laughs> yeah, dude, shoot through the wall. Just don't shoot your buddy in the yes, butt. I don't, what was that? The TV is still on? That's pretty impressive. Old tech, super durable. <laughs> it's pretty good action choreography right there. He jumps down the stairs. <laughs> broken ankle. If had a broken ankle, then okay. being blown up by a grenade. You ever see Nicolas Cage or Gerald Butler get a broken ankle jumping from an explosion? If you're an action star, nothing can Doesn't happen. happen. Doesn't happen. Like, it's, oh, you unless you're Tom Cruise. Let me go! Let me go! I'd take that shot 10 times out of 10. Yeah, you gotta go for it. Exactly. Just know your holds. It's all about knowing yeah. your holds. If you know yourself and your weapon, yeah, you can do that. We would also train that drill too. You'd put a target and then you'd staple another target over it and yeah, then we would we do tur few. turn around, engage two rounds, bang bang, and as fast as possible without hitting the target in front of it. So we would train that. Ah, uh, the wolf is gone. I will follow you into battle even later. Yeah, she's cool, man. She's mess around. Nope. Don't play no sh. That was great. That was fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, what? just had to let no, that No, no, it's okay. No, it's, please, please continue to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good, good. That's good. 
If you wanna see more videos like this, go to Gameology's Facebook and YouTube page.